There we go. Ready? So we have the audio. The audio is on. Okay. Very good. Uh, good evening, guys. How are you? It's nice to see you again. Good evening, teacher. I'm fine. Thanks. Very good. Thank you. Happy to see you again, Rodrigo. Thank you for coming. Well, guys, I'm really happy to see you again one more time. Uh, this is going to be the last class of the week. Right? So we are exactly at the middle. We already had classes for two weeks at this point. We had classes last week, and now we are completing week number two. So that's perfect, guys. We are doing a great job. We are almost there. Qué bien, guys. Muchas gracias por estar acá. Me siento contento. Eh, ahora tenemos nuestra clase, la última de la semana, ¿verdad? Vamos a ver por acá. So, Jeffrey says, uh, no hay otra casa. Okay, good evening, Jeffrey. All right, thank you for letting me know. Thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, I know that sometimes that happens. I know that sometimes you guys are busy. You guys may be uh, at work sometimes. That can happen, and sometimes... Yes. Yes, uh, Jeffrey, Mauricio. Yeah, Mauricio. That's okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah, you know that sometimes that can happen. I know that you guys probably may be busy, like uh, doing something uh, for work, or sometimes you may be driving. So that's fine. If you want to, uh, if you're not able to participate sometimes, that's fine, right? Uh, the point, uh, the thing is that you should be able to practice at least sometimes, right? That, that would be like the ideal. Uh, scenario right that you can practice at least once okay <laughs> like at least sometimes but you know that's fine well guys i'm really happy to see you and thank you for coming so today we're going to work on um the information that we didn't cover yesterday we had one topic that we didn't really finished we just like started the topic but we didn't actually got into it because we ran out of time so today we're going to work on that we're also going to uh, complete the midterm exam right we're going to work on that so in case that you guys didn't finish that yet uh, i will help you so we can do it bueno vamos a ver eh... Bueno, eh, ya estamos por acá, siete. Muchas gracias. Eh, bienvenida, Margarita. Welcome, Margarita. Good evening. How are you? Thank you. I'm fine. Very good. Happy to see you. How was your day today, Margarita? Did you do something exciting today? Mm, not much. Not really. I am relaxed. You, okay. So did you go to work or something or did you just stay at home? Uh, I stay at home today. I don't work. Oh, okay. Very good. Okay, I understand. It was a really nice weather today, guys. I don't know, uh, like, in your area, uh, what was the weather like? But here, it was raining a little bit. It, it was really nice. I liked it. Do you like it when it rains? Do, do you guys like it when it rains? A lot of people say that they like it when it rains. I, I don't know about you guys, but for me, it's really good. I mean, as long as it doesn't rain like that much, and I, as long as I don't have to go out uh, or things like that, I remember that many times I had to do something like outside and it was raining, like really heavy rain. And then I, I got really drenched, like really wet, <laughs> you know? So that's that's not funny. That's not fun. That's not fun, guys. Vamos a ver. Dice Norma. Will be listening. I have no one to see. Yes. Okay. I understand. Okay. Uh. All right. But well, that's okay, guys. Uh, like I mentioned before, sometimes I can understand that we may be busy, that we may not be able to participate, but we should be. Uh, we should try to do it as much as we can. Okay. I know that Lisano is always there, and I, I understand that this time probably she will not be able to uh, to do it okay uh 
So yes, uh, I understand that uh, you have no one that can take care of your child, right? That's what you're trying to say. Okay, take care or look, look after sometimes. We can say that. Bueno, guys, entonces vamos a continuar ahora con nuestras clases, como les estaba mencionando. Es la última clase de la semana, ¿correcto? Así que ya mañana nosotros descansamos. Hasta ahora se supone que tenemos que haber completado la plataforma, la sección número 3 y también el examen de medio plazo, the midterm exam, right? So we need to already have all of that completed. We are going to check a couple of things today, uh, just in case that you guys had any questions. Uh, if there is anything that you guys want to uh, ask, you can always go ahead and do it, right? Right, so, vamos a ver, ¿qué tal? Right, how about uh, Herson? How are you today, Herson? How's your day going? I'm fine, teacher. Very you? good. I'm doing fine, thank you for asking. So, did you do anything okay. interesting today? Uh, do, you, do you go to work? Or do you just do something else? Can you repeat me, please? Excuse me? Can you repeat me, please? Sure, sure. Uh, uh, do you go to work? Uh, do you have a job that you go to? Yes. Um, today, I work. Oh, I see. So you work today. Uh, do you work on Saturday or Sunday? Or not really? No, no. We can not work. Oh, so you don't... I work don't... on... Mm -hmm. uh, Monday to Friday. Okay, very good. Very nice. So you only work from Monday through Friday. Very good. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Harrison. I appreciate that. Thank you. You work. Very good. That's a good schedule, right? I mean, a lot of people want uh, would like to have a job like that, that you can just go to work from Monday through Friday. So you can have the weekend off so you can uh, do whatever you want to. You can go uh, and spend time with your friends or family or uh, your couple. You have like a girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife, whatever. I think that a lot of people uh, like that kind of schedule because of that. All right, guys. So, vamos a ver. Les voy a compartir por acá la pantalla, guys, acerca de lo que vamos a estar viendo el día de hoy. So, uh, please bear with me for a couple of seconds. Okay, vamos a ver. Quiero asegurarme esta vez si lo comparto bien. We have the audio that is on. Okay, there we go. All right, guys. So, this is the uh, part that we are missing. So, we just have to complete this part. Uh, there is a one video. There is another knowledge check here. And then there is a reading exercise. Okay. And after that, we have the uh, midterm exam, right? So it says here, lesson objective. By the end of the class, you will be exposed to adverbial clauses of time, what they are, what they are, and their use. Okay. Sorry, guys. Sorry about that. Yeah. So what they are and their use. Okay. There. Vamos a ver, vamos a ver ahorita qué son las eh, cláusulas adverbiales de tiempo, ¿ok? Nosotros creo que ya tenemos bastante claro que es una, una cláusula, ¿verdad? Vamos a ver, eh, who can tell me what a clause is? What, what is that? What is a clause? We have two types of clauses, right? Like basically two types. Because I explained that to you before. So I think that we should know what it is, right? ¿Qué me pueden decir acerca de las cláusulas? ¿Qué son esas cosas? ¿Con qué se come? <laughs> what is a clause, guys? I know you, I know that you know. I mean, you know. Sería como un comodín. ¿Un comodín? Sí. Uh -huh. ¿A qué se refiere con comodín? Eh, vamos a ver, Gerson. Que se puede utilizar eh, eh, dependiendo de, 
de lo que se pretende decir. Sí, Puedo pudiéramos, hacer. Decir, pudiéramos decir que sí. Muy bien, muy bien. Muchas gracias, Gerson. Vamos a ver, ¿alguien más? ¿Anybody else? A clause include a subject and verb. That is correct. That, that are, those are like some of the elements that are included in a clause, right? And we said that we have uh, independent clauses and we also have dependent clauses, right? So that is what we are going to like, uh, we are going to check one more time, okay? Because I, I like I mentioned before, I, I explained that to you before. So you will see and you will remember uh, when you watch the video, you will, you will remember that I explained that to you before, okay? Vamos a ver el video, guys. Aquí, aquí nos vamos a acordar otra vez y vamos a sacar, perdón, <ríe> ya me enredé todo, de que vamos a sacar todas las dudas que teníamos, ¿ok? Esto, como les digo, ya se los había explicado antes, entonces acá solamente va a ser como un recordatorio para ustedes, de la verdad. Así que vamos a ver el video, ¿ok? We're going to watch the video, guys, and then I will ask you some questions. All right, so let's do that. Hi, I have a question for you. What is an adverbial clause of time? I'll give you a hint. An adverbial clause of time can't occur alone as it needs a main idea. Stay around and listen to the ex All right, so did you guys uh, hear that? She said that an adverbial clause of time, um, it is a dependent clause because it needs a main idea, okay? Dice que las cláusulas, eh, en este caso las cláusulas adverbiales de tiempo son cláusulas dependientes porque necesitan una idea principal. Esa es una, como una pista, dice, que nos está dando. Vamos a continuar escuchándolo para que veamos exactamente de qué se trata. Explanation and follow the examples for better understanding. Adverbial clauses of time. When people get married in Japan, they sometimes have the ceremony at a shrine. After the food is served, The guests give speeches or sing songs. Before the guests leave, the bride and groom give them presents. We're going to break this for you so you may understand it better. There are many types of adverbial clauses, but in this session we want you to learn about adverbial clause of time. Let's define what an adverbial clause is. An adverbial clause of time describes or defines the when something happens. Adverbial Bye. Vamos a explicarlo por partes, ¿verdad? Primero, ¿qué es una cláusula? Una cláusula es como una oración, ¿ok? Como ustedes dijeron, eh, tiene cosas como, por ejemplo, un sujeto, tiene un verbo. En este caso, como estamos hablando, hay de diferentes tipos. En este caso, una cláusula adverbial de tiempo describe o define, dice acá, cuando algo pasa, ¿ok? Entonces, eso es lo que es una cláusula adverbial de tiempo, ¿ok? Es un tipo que hay de varios que, que tenemos. Right, so we're going, to, we're going to continue, guys. Let's, uh... Clauses of time are easy to identify because they begin with a subordinating conjunction. For example, when, after, before, since, until, while, whenever. We invite... Vale, aquí tenemos eh, estas palabras que son las que nosotros vamos a utilizar para las cláusulas adverbiales de tiempo, ¿ok? Dice que es una conjunción subordinante. No importa tanto el nombre, guys, eh, realmente a lo que se refiere eso es que es como una palabra que une dos ideas, ¿ok? Eso es lo que son estas palabras. Unen dos oraciones o dos ideas, por así decirlo. Entonces tenemos when, after, before, since, until, and while, ¿ok? Cuando, después, eso todos lo sabemos, ¿verdad? Before, antes, since, desde, Until, hasta, and while, mientras, ¿ok? Esos son los significados de todas estas palabras. Vamos a seguir viendo. Entonces, hasta ahora ya sabemos que es una cláusula, que es una cláusula adverbial de tiempo, y qué palabras son las que llevan esas cláusulas. Son estas, ¿verdad? Porque nos describen o definen cuando algo pasa. I you to ask your teacher to give you a list of subordinating conjunctions as a reference. You may be wondering what does a subordinating conjunction do. A subordinating conjunction joins two sentences, one sentence being called dependent or subordinated, and another sentence being independent or main clause. Y ahí está lo que les decía, ¿ok? Se une dos eh, ideas, por así decirlo, dos oraciones. Tenemos la, the one that is dependent 
or subordinated. And then we have the one that is independent, or we call it uh, the main clause. Okay? As said in the intro video, an adverbial clause of time can't occur on its own because it makes no sense. It is not complete. We will take a look at some examples. Once you see them, you will know what we're talking about here. When she comes home, she will read a bedtime story. Let's analyze this sentence. When is a subordinating conjunction or adverb. She is the subject. Comes the verb. Now, when she comes home, all together is a subordinating or dependent clause, meaning it is not complete. It depends on some other idea. You expect more information. She will read a bedtime story is a main clause or independent clause, meaning it makes perfect sense alone. What we're doing now is making a more complex sentence. Let's work with another example. Aquí, eh, creo que tal vez recordaron lo que yo les mencionaba, porque esto ya lo habíamos visto un poco, lo habíamos visto antes, ¿verdad? Eh, perdón, déjeme, déjeme. Example. Before she went to school, she Sorry, guys. finished all her homework. Let me go ahead. Okay, there we go. <laughs> My goodness. Okay, so we have the dependent clause. It says, when she comes home. Okay, meaning is not complete. So we say that it is a dependent clause because it's not complete. It doesn't make sense, right? If you say just uh, when she comes home, then uh, it doesn't make like really too much sense. Uh, you want to know exactly what is the meaning for that. You need more information so you can actually know uh, what we are, uh, the message that, that we are trying to uh, to give. So in this case, we have, she will read a bedtime story is a main clause or independent clause. So uh, it means that it makes perfect sense alone, okay? You can just say she will read a bedtime story and that's, that's fine. I mean, people will understand the message here. But in this case, uh, the relative clause, uh, it doesn't make sense, okay? And like you can see, we have when she comes home. So we have the... Uh, subordinating conjunction that we talked about before. Okay. Bueno, entonces ahí están todos los elementos que acabamos de ver atrás, ¿verdad? Tenemos la cláusula principal o la oración principal, por así decirlo, la oración secundaria eh, que está acá eh, con esta palabra, ¿ok? Así la podemos identificar. Tiene este, este tipo de palabras, en este caso de, de tiempo, porque estamos, estamos viendo eh, las eh, cláusulas adverbiales de tiempo, ¿ok? Por esa razón. Vamos a ver una de estas palabras para este tipo de oraciones. Ok, vamos a continuar. Before she went to school, she finished all her homework. I will give you a couple of minutes to break down this sentence. Aquí otra vez, nos, lo que nos está diciendo es otro ejemplo. Si se fijan, acá tenemos una expresión de tiempo, ¿verdad? Es de cuando pasa algo. So aquí dice, before she went to school, she finished all her homework. Okay, so before. Es un momento en el tiempo. Antes de que se fuera a la escuela, ella terminó toda su tarea. Okay, la finalizó. Y nos está pidiendo, dice, let's uh, break it down. Break it down es, es como desglosarlo, okay. Es como separarlo en partes. Entonces eso es lo que vamos a hacer ahora. Es lo que viene a continuación en el video. Try to do as we did on our previous example. So let's do it together. Before, subordinating conjunction or adverb. She, the subject. Went, the verb. Before she went to school is a subordinated or dependent clause. And she finished all her homework is a main or independent clause. Excellent. Well done. Entonces aquí está eh, los elementos de cada eh, de las dos eh, cláusulas, ¿verdad? Tenemos acá la cláusula que es dependiente. Tenemos una conjunción o un adverbio, dice acá, okay, que es before, puede ser after, uh, los que vimos anteriormente, until, while, uh, when, uh, those kind of words, those kind of expressions, right? And then we have the subject, just like Margarita said, I think that Margarita said that, we have the subject and then we have the verb, that is for the dependent clause. Then we have before she went to school. That is the subordinated or dependent clause. Then we have the main clause, which is uh, the other idea. 
in this case, she finished all her homework. It's an independent class. And it makes sense. Uh, it makes completely uh, perfect sense by its own. It doesn't need more information to it. Okay? Estamos claros hasta ahora, guys. Espero que ya les esté quedando más claro esta parte con la explicación que les acabo de dar. Básicamente es lo que les había dicho antes. ¿Alguna pregunta? ¿Any questions or concerns about this? About this part? Ya vamos a hacer unos ejemplos, ¿ok? Quiero que ustedes me digan a mí. Vamos a utilizar estas expresiones que acabo de mencionarles y ustedes van a hacer algunos ejemplos, ¿ok? Vamos a unir dos ideas utilizando esas expresiones como before, eh, after, a while, or until, since, all those uh, time expressions that we discussed before. Right, si no tenemos preguntas, vamos a continuar entonces. Right, so let's move on. Before we go, it is important for you to know that an adverbial cause of time can appear either at the beginning of the entire sentence or in the middle of it. It is okay to say, since they got married, they have traveled around the world or they have traveled around the world since they got married. The only difference is the use of a comma if the subordinating conjunction begins the sentence. Otros puntos importantes, guys. Eh, estamos viendo otra vez la estructura, ¿verdad? Tenemos acá dos, uh, so we have two options. Uh, option number one, the uh, dependent clause, it can go at the beginning, right? Like in this case, since they got married, then uh, very important, we need to put the comma. We have the comma and then we have the main clause. So the uh, dependent clause can be at the beginning like this, or it can go like basically in the middle like this. We have number two, they have traveled around the world since they got married, okay? So in this case, we don't add the comma just here when it goes at the beginning, okay? For example, podríamos decir, uh, before they got married, Comma, they have traveled around the world. Or we can say they have traveled around the world before they got married. Things like that. So it just, uh, we have two options. It can be at the beginning or it can be in the middle of the sentence. Es otro punto, otro punto importante, ¿verdad? Así que ya tenemos, uh, so we already have what a main clause is, what a dependent clause is. We already have the elements like the subject, the verb, the conjunction, we have all those things. So now we should be able to make some examples. You guys should be able to do that. So I want you guys to think about, like, the first thing that we need to do is to think about a main uh, sentence, and then we need to think about a secondary idea. Hay muchas, eh, muchas, muchas cosas en las que podemos pensar, ¿verdad? Primero, una idea principal que la vamos a conectar con otra idea que es secundaria y tiene que eh, expresar como el momento en el que sucedió algo. Eso es lo que nos pide acá. Vamos a escucharlo. Can you give us now two examples? Do so in our discussion box. Ahí está. Dice two examples. So we need to write a dependent plus an independent sentence. So let's think about it, guys. At least two examples, please. Voy a ponerles por acá eh, los ejemplos para que ustedes los puedan tener de referencia. We're going to break. After the food is served. Aquí tenemos algunos ejemplos. Ustedes pueden tomar como referencia a esto. Así que por favor hagamos. Veamos los ejemplos acá. Dice, number one, when people get married in Japan, coma, they sometimes have the ceremony at a shrine. Then number two, after the food is served, coma, the guests give speeches or sing songs. Before the guests leave, coma, the bride and groom give them presents. 
Ok, fíjense acá, tenemos las expresiones estas de tiempo, están al principio, por esa razón tenemos una coma, para separar las dos ideas, ok. Esa es otra cosa importante. Recordemos que nosotros estamos aprendiendo de todo, estamos aprendiendo listening, estamos aprendiendo también uh, eh, nuestro eh, speaking, and also estamos aprendiendo nuestro grammar. Así que todas esas cosas las tenemos que dar atención. Supongamos que ustedes tienen que escribir un correo electrónico o una carta, no sé, qué sé yo, eh, para un trabajo, por ejemplo. Tienen que saber hacerlo de la manera más profesional posible, ¿verdad? Tal vez ahora ya hay más herramientas tecnológicas que nos permiten hacer eso, pero eh, si queremos estar seguros de lo que estamos haciendo, necesitamos también tener el conocimiento. Puede ser que esté allí la herramienta y que nos lo pueda generar, pero si no sabemos cómo tiene que ser, probablemente pues, terminemos haciéndolo mal. Entonces es bueno saber. Si ustedes solamente hacen una pequeña revisión, ya con el conocimiento. All right, guys. So, if you have any examples, uh, you can share the examples with the class. Or I can ask you if you want to. Vamos a ver aquí. Por, uh, aquí Francisca dice, how many examples? Uh, we need to make at least two examples. Francisca. Let's see or let's see here. After he made uh, the homework, he went to play soccer. Well, that's that's good. But remember, uh, Rodrigo, that you need to say after he did the homework. Okay, like do the homework. Do homework. Okay, that's the only thing. Recordemos que para decir de hacer la tarea es como do en lugar de make. Esa es otra cosa que tal vez, bueno, un consejo para ustedes. Normalmente, cuando decimos make, nos referimos como a, como a cuando se trata de preparar o armar algo, por así decirlo. Like, for example, when you say, uh, I make a dinner, I make a sandwich, for example, I make it because I am, like, putting different cars together. But when you are doing something like, uh, like, like a job or... Uh, homework, that's something different. Like, you know, he was talking on the phone when I arrived. Okay, very good, Wendy. Very good. He was talking on the phone when I arrived. When I arrived. Muy bien, muy buen ejemplo. Si se fijan, está también, eh, acá estamos hablando de cosas que pasaron. O cosas que pasan en, en general. Puede ser tanto en pasado como en presente. Porque tenemos acá, por ejemplo, dice When people get married in Japan, they sometimes have the ceremony at the shrine. So it could be. ¿Qué pasa con los demás? Ahorita no... Eh, ¿Tienen alguna duda? ¿Alguna pregunta? Come on, guys. If you have any questions, uh, you can go ahead and uh, ask your questions. Okay? Remember that You can do that. If you don't uh, understand something, if you have questions with something, you can tell me. Vamos a ver por acá. Vamos a ver, por ejemplo, Marlon. Marlon, do you have any examples at this time that you would like to share with the class? Marlon. Ok, bueno, entonces vamos a continuar, guys. Eh, podemos ir por acá. My mom prepares the dinner before my father comes home. Ok, very good. Bueno, Wendy, go ahead. Go ahead, Wendy. Ay, yo le puse un ejemplo en el chat. No sé si está mm -hmm. bueno. Yep. Yeah, I, I, saw, I saw the example that you put on the chat. Yes. Yep, and that's good. Yeah, he was take, he was talking on the phone when I arrived, right? 
So, yep, I see that. I can see that. Thank you, Wendy. Bueno, vamos a avanzar entonces por acá. So, we have uh, before, uh, we have this knowledge check, guys. I, I assume that you guys already did this because uh, we this is what we need to complete for uh, today. So, it says, read the sentences and match these phrases with the information below. So, we have number one, before a man and a woman get married, they usually... And then we have all these options. We need to choose the right option here. Fíjense bien, acá está otra vez aplicado lo que acabamos de ver. Está la, la, la palabra esta de tiempo, como es before. Entonces esta es la cláusula dependiente, ¿correcto? Luego, para separarla de la principal, nosotros utilizamos la coma. Aquí está. So it says, before a man and a woman get married, coma, they usually... Eh, vamos a ver... So I would say that they date each other for about a year. That, that would be like the most accurate answer here. Right? So that's the answer for this. They usually date each other for about a year. Okay? Entonces ellos usualmente salen o tienen citas por aproximadamente un año. Y luego tenemos la siguiente. Fíjense otra vez. When a couple gets engaged, comma, then we have the rest of the, uh, then we have the, like, the main clause after that, right? Aquí tenemos otra expresión. Fíjense que tenemos otra que no vimos en el video. It's the right after a couple gets engaged. Esta es otra expresión de tiempo. Justo después de que una pareja se compromete, Usualmente, eh, coma, usualmente ahí hacen algo, ¿ok? Y así, todas, todas tienen la misma, parece dinámica, la misma estructura en la cual la expresión está al comienzo, pero la pudiéramos cambiar, ¿verdad? Vamos a ver, ¿qué, ¿cómo la pudiéramos nosotros cambiar? Vamos a preguntar por acá. ¿Qué tal si nosotros queremos cambiar el orden? ¿Cómo sería en la otra posibilidad que tenemos? Vamos a ver por acá. Les voy a preguntar a ustedes. Vamos a ver, Rodrigo, José, Mendoza. Por ejemplo, hey. uh, right, uh, so, like this, uh, number two, please. Um, ok, por ejemplo, The men often gives the woman a diamond right when a couple gets engaged. Very good. So uh, the man often gives the woman a diamond ring, ring, like ringtone, right? Ring. When a couple gets engaged. Engaged. Vamos a ver. Otra vez, una vez más, por favor, Rodrigo. Okay. Uh, the man often uh -huh. gives the woman uh -huh. a diamond right ring when a cop ring diamond when ring. a couple diamond uh -huh. ring when uh -huh. a couple gets engaged 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 algo así por ahí vamos muy bien muy bien muchas gracias okay okay very good thank okay. you okay I appreciate that thank you so much very good okay guys I will uh, That very good job. Thank you, Rodrigo. Bueno, entonces ahí tenemos. Estas palabras son un poco complicadas de pronunciar, ¿verdad? Yo eh, lo entiendo. A mí también me cuesta, no lo crean. Hay palabras que trato de repetirlas bastante para poder eh, mejorar la pronunciación, ¿ok? Yo también eh, voy a compartirles por ahí algún video de cómo se pronuncian algunas palabras para que, más que todo estas palabras que son difíciles, para que ustedes las puedan pronunciar de la forma correcta, ¿ok? Vamos a ver. Bueno, entonces, eh, esta es la parte, esta parte es la que ustedes tienen que completar. Todas tienen la misma dinámica, ¿sí? Ok, so I think that there, you shouldn't have any problems with this. Uh, do you guys have any questions with this part? Uh, do you guys have any problem? Like, yesterday I remember that, for example, Wendy told me that she was trying uh, to answer one of the questions, but it was... Uh, saying that she was putting the wrong answer 
So I don't know if you guys have any problems with this. So is, is everything okay with this part? Uh, teacher, better. I have a question. Sure. Uh, adverbial clause um, is not necessary uh, right when uh, start the sentence? No. Uh, so we, yeah, I mean, it can be at the beginning or it can be like in the middle. That's what we discussed just uh, a few minutes ago. Is that what you mean? It's like, like in this case, right? Just like you said, uh, we have uh, this sentence uh, here that says, when a couple gets engaged, the man often gives the woman a diamond ring, but it can also be like in the middle, like just like you said. So you can say like, the man often gives the woman a diamond ring when a couple gets engaged. Is that what you're trying to ask? Okay, yes, thank you, teacher. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Very good, very good. Thank you so much, Rodrigo. Okay, so sí, ahí puede estar, digamos, al principio, puede estar en medio. Eh, tenemos esas dos posibilidades, ¿ok? Así que lo pueden decir de ambas formas y está bien. Vamos a ver. Luego de esto, nosotros teníamos esta actividad, que es una actividad para eh, mejorar nuestras habilidades de entendimiento. ¿Ok? Aquí dice eso. In this class, you will practice your reading skills for better understanding when scanning for specific information and understanding reference words. Ok, en esta, en esta clase practicarán sus habilidades de lectura para entender mejor cuando se busca información específica y entender palabras de referencia. Vamos a ver. Bueno, la lectura se trata acá, dice Unique Customs. Vamos a ver. Está bastante corta, la verdad. Eh. Vamos a ver, vamos a leer esto. Eh, así que me gustaría que ustedes me ayuden, por favor. Como siempre. Si podemos ser voluntarios, pues mucho que mejor. Porque así sé quiénes sí pueden y quiénes, quiénes no. Porque a veces les pregunto y tal vez no están disponibles, ¿verdad? Entonces, no sé si alguien, uh, anyone, anyone would like to help me with this. Like, to read the first paragraph and then somebody else can read paragraph number two. There we go. So we have Stephanie, number one. Then Rodrigo can read number two. And then Wendy. Uh, number three, well, uh, ya vamos a ver aquí porque ya tenemos a varios. Creo que ya los tenemos a los cinco. Dejen la mano levantada, por favor, para que no tengamos problemas. Entonces, Stephanie va a leer el, par el párrafo número uno. So, you can go ahead, Stephanie. Ok. January 17 is St. Anthony's Day in Mexico. It's a day when people ask for permission for the animals by bringing them to church. Mm -hmm. But before the animals go into the church, the people usually dress them up the flowers in right mm -hmm. Okay, Very good. Thank you so much, Stephanie. All right. So one more time. Uh, January 17 is St. Anthony's Day in Mexico. It's a day when people ask for protection for their animals by bringing them to church. But before the animals got uh, going to church, into the church, the people usually dress them up in flowers and ribbons. Okay. Vamos a decirlo una vez más, por favor, Stephanie, una vez más. Okay. January 7th is St. Anthony's Day in mm -hmm. Mexico. Mm -hmm. It's a day when people ask for petition for their animals. By Protection being... for their animals. Protection. Protection for the animals by their region. animals. Their they animal. Their. Their. Mm -hmm. Yes, there uh, were. Animals by bringing them to church. But mm -hmm. before the animals go into the church, the people usually dress them up the flowers in ribbon. Ribbons. 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 Ok, very good. Muchas gracias, Stephanie. Muchas gracias. Buen trabajo. Muy bien. Muchas gracias. Okay. Me gusta de verdad que participemos. Y como les digo siempre, si tenemos alguna cosita ahí, eh, yo les voy a decir para que podamos hacerlo de la mejor forma. Ok, eso es lo importante. Que podamos ir mejorando cada día. Right, so then we have number two, uh, Rodrigo Hernández. Please go ahead. Ok. Uh, 
of the lunar calendar, mm -hmm. Koreans celebrate the sun. Mm -hmm. So now a Korean Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. It's a day when people give thanks for the harvest. Mm -hmm. Korean families honor their ancestors by going to the grave to take them rice and fruit and clean the rice, the grave. Okay. Muy bien, muy bien. Muchas gracias, eh, Rodrigo. Thank you. Good job. Bueno, eh, ¿alguna pregunta con esta parte, guys? Eh, tenemos aquí que dice el 15 de agosto eh, del calendario lunar. Eh, gente de Corea, coreanos, celebran Chuseok. Así se llama esa celebración, ¿verdad? Eh, y dice que ellos, eh, dice acá, es también conocido como eh, acción de gracias coreano acción de gracias coreano eh, y dice es un día cuando las personas dan gracias por la cosecha okay? harvest es la cosecha harvest dice eh, familias coreanas homenajean a o honran a sus ancestros uh, yendo a sus eh, tumbas a graves Uh, to take them rice eh, para llevarles eh, dice arroz y fruta y vamos a ver qué significa qué significa gravity teas guys do you know that because I don't I don't know let me take a look here because I don't know what that means does anybody know what it means Ok. Bueno, parece que esta palabra de... Yo lo estaba buscando acá ahorita. Que realmente... Tumbas. Tumbas, correcto. Muchas gracias. Yeah, that is correct. So I, I didn't know that. So grave cities. I think I... Uh, debe ser algo así, ¿verdad? No estoy seguro de la pronunciación, pero la voy a revisar y le voy a decir. Pero son tumbas, ¿ok? Grave cities. Grave cities. Algo así. Ya vamos a ver. Bueno, muy bien. Entonces vamos con la número 3 que nos va a ayudar Wendy. Ok. Long ago in India, a person who needed help sent her silk bracelet to an emperor. Uh -huh. Although he did no, not arrive in time to help her, he kept the bracelet as a sign of the bond between, between them. Today in India, during the festival Oiraki, Men promise to be loyal to the woman. In mm -hmm. a the woman give them a bracelet of silk, mm -hmm. corn or gold thread. Ok, muy bien, muchas gracias, Wendy. Vamos a ver, dice, Long ago in India, a princess who needed help sent her silk bracelet, okay, bracelet to an emperor. Although he did not arrive in time, Uh, to help her, he kept the bracelet, uh, the bracelet as a sign of the bond between them. Today, in India, during the festival of Raki, men promise, okay, promise to be loyal to their women. In exchange, the women give them a bracelet of silk, cotton, or gold thread. Okay, muy interesante, ¿verdad? Vamos a ver, una vez más, Wendy, por favor. Una, ¿Podría repetirlo una vez más? Ok. Long ago in India, a princess who needed help sent her silk bracelet to uh -huh. an emperor. Ok. Also, so he did... Uh -huh. sorry, to, sorry to interrupt you. So, it's a, a princess who needed help sent her silk bracelet. Ok, bracelet. Bracelet. Bracelet, bracelet. to an emperor. Uh -huh. Although he did not arrive in time to help her, he uh -huh. kept the bracelet as uh -huh. a sign of, of the bond between them. Uh -huh. Today in India, during the festival of Raki, uh -huh. men me promise, promise to be promise promise to be promise men promise to, men promise to be uh -huh. loyal to their woman to their it women. Their women. Their women. women. Their women. Mm -hmm. In a shame, 
the women give them a bracelet of silk coron or gold thread. Ok, muy bien. Muchas gracias, Wendy. Muy, muy bien. Perfecto. Buen trabajo. Muchas gracias, de verdad. Ahí vamos mejorando. You're welcome. Ahí vamos mejorando, Wendy. So, yes. Uh, just a, a few words that we need to improve, guys. I think that your guys are doing a great job. And thank you. Thank you for always volunteering for these activities. Okay, so we have uh, number four. Nos va a ayudar Gerson. You can go ahead, Gerson. Okay. When of the biggest celebration in Argentina is New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. On the evening of December uh, 31, mm -hmm. families get, get together and have a big meal mm -hmm. at midnight. Fireworks explode mm -hmm. everywhere and continues throughout the night. Mm -hmm. This is a day when friends and families meet for various, which mm -hmm. the which lasts until the next morning. Okay, muy bien, muchas gracias, Gerson. So yes, right. It says one of the biggest celebrations in Argentina is New Year's Eve. On the evening of December 31, families get together and have a big meal at midnight. Fireworks explode everywhere and continue throughout the night. Okay. Recuerden lo que siempre les digo, guys. Hay palabras que son como dos palabritas ahí juntas. Y esta sería una de ellas. Entonces sería throughout the night. Okay. Throughout. Throughout the night. Algo que es bien importante es de que acá, siempre que tenemos estas palabras que comienzan como THR, es como through. Como si fuera una Z por ahí al inicio. Throughout the night. This is a day when friends and families meet for parties, which last until the next morning. Okay? That's very, very similar to us, right? I mean, uh, we celebrate New Year's Eve just like people in Argentina. I think that probably that's something that uh, occurs like, like almost everywhere in Latin America because we celebrate like on December uh, 31 or 31st. We, we do that too. So it's, it's very similar to this. Okay, muchas gracias a todos los que participamos. Eh, ¿Qué teníamos que hacer nosotros con esta lectura? Básicamente acá tenemos, déjeme ver, tenemos un par de como preguntitas, ¿verdad? Tenemos que, dice acá, based on the article, decide what this word refer to. Lea el artículo, basado en el artículo de CIDA, ¿a qué se refieren estas palabras? Escoja la respuesta correcta. Eh, acá tenemos them. Tenemos entonces part one, line two. So that means paragraph number one, line number two. Entonces tendríamos que ir nosotros acá. Párrafo uno, okay. línea número dos. Dice, people ask for protection for their animals. Bringing them by bringing them to church. Entonces them, ¿a qué se refiere acá? ¿Se refiere a, los, a las personas? ¿A Animal. los animales? Animals. Animals. That is correct. Very good. Very good job, guys. That is correct. So basically, that's what we need to do in this uh, section, right? We have it uh, for number two. We have paragraph number two, line number two. So we come here and we go to paragraph number two. And then we go to line number two, which is this one right here. So it says also known as Korean Thanksgivings, uh, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Uh, It's a day when people give thanks for the harvest. Entonces ahí tendríamos que... Uh -huh. Go ahead, Wendy. Chusak. Chusak? Yeah. Okay, vamos yes. a ver. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you, girls. Thank you. Vamos a ver. Dos dice acá. Sí, estamos hablando de Chusak, ¿verdad? Acá dice, celebran Chusak. Así se llama esa... Eh, celebración coreana, que es como el día de acción de gracias. Dice it's a day when people give thanks for the harvest. So yes, that is correct. Entonces básicamente ahí es lo que tenemos que hacer. Tenemos que identificar cuál de estas eh, palabras que tenemos acá es lo que representa estos como pronombres. ¿no? Estos son pronombres, creo. O estos adjetivos eh, posesivos, por así decirlo. Estos posesivos, lo vamos a dejar ahí. Bueno, 
vamos entonces con la siguiente parte. No sé si tienen alguna pregunta acerca de esto. Me imagino que no, ¿verdad? Está bastante fácil. Creo que ya ustedes ya, ya lo tienen. You guys got it. Bueno, después de eso teníamos nosotros nuestra... Acá nuestro examen de medio plazo. The midterm exam. Uh, so the first theme here, it says, read the sentence and choose the correct part of the two-part verb that is missing. Entonces, si ustedes se acuerdan, antes nosotros vimos esos verbos que tienen dos partes, que eran los phrasal verbs, right? So the phrasal verbs have two parts. We have the, 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 the main verb, and then we have the particle that changes like the, the meaning of the verb completely. Like, for example, in this case, we can say, please clean up. Uh, and then uh, it should be something like clean up your bedroom or uh, the bedroom, for example. And then uh, that's like the, the sentence, right? But I think that there is something missing here, but that's not like the point. We just have to put on the particle that uh, the correct, uh, that would be like the correct answer in these cases. Bueno, en este caso, perdón, tenemos que ponerle la partícula que va con el verbo, okay? Es lo que vimos anteriormente. Luego tenemos acá, por ejemplo, could you please put the groceries in the kitchen? Entonces, ahí tenemos que ponerle la partícula, una de estas palabras, que es la que corresponde, okay? Yo creo que sería away, ¿verdad? Put away the groceries in the kitchen. What, what do you think, guys? What about here? Uh, I think that this is the right answer, but I don't know. Well, what do you guys think about this? It's a way, teacher. A way, right? Okay, very good. And then number three, what is the right answer to this? Down, teacher. Down. Could you turn down the TV? That's correct. Entonces, ahí está. Fácil, ¿verdad? Eh, luego dice, read the sentences and choose between an infinitive or gerund. Okay, ¿Se acuerdan? Nosotros vimos los infinitivos y los gerundios. Dijimos que eran para eh, hablar acerca de propósitos o usos. ¿Para qué es algo? Por ejemplo, en este caso tenemos los microondas. Los hornos microondas eh, son utilizados para cocinar comida muy rápido. Entonces ahí teníamos nosotros, por ejemplo, uh, for cooking. Dijimos que eh, después de for... Va a ir un verbo con ing, ¿correcto? Y también teníamos la otra opción que era to cook, que sería un infinitivo, ¿verdad? Es to más el verbo. Pero en este caso, eh, la respuesta correcta sería esta de acá. Okay, for cooking food very fast. Ovens are used for cooking food very fast. And then, when you go to the beach, try... Uh, esto es otra parte que nosotros estuvimos viendo acerca de las sugerencias, ¿ok? ¿Se acuerdan de eso? Teníamos los imperativos y nosotros le agregábamos como una expresión al principio para dar una sugerencia, ¿ok? Like, for example, we say something like uh, please uh, or remember uh, to study for your exam or uh, don't forget to uh, bring uh, your sunscreen when you go to the beach. Things like that, right? We add like a little expression at the beginning so we can give a suggestion instead of an order. So that's like the difference here. Entonces tenemos acá, dice, cuando vayas a la playa, intenta, ok, fíjense acá, dice, intenta, eh, dice, camcorder wet, not to get, ¿verdad? Sería not to get, try not to get the camcorder wet, ok? ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué es así? Esto dijimos que era la, la estructura correcta, ¿verdad? Try y not to. ¿Ok? Try not to. Porque era así para este tipo de expresiones. Cuando tenemos try y este tipo de verbos, después va a ir de esa forma. Try not to. And then it goes like uh, the, the complement. En otros casos, vamos a utilizar el gerundio. Ya vamos a ver. Ok, aquí dice, you can use my cell phone uh, to leave a voicemail. Ok, to, to leave a voicemail. You can do that. And then, don't forget uh, to take your ATM card with you. 
Sí, sí. Entonces aquí esta parte era para usos y propósitos utilizando infinitivos o gerundios. Vamos a ver acá. Luego dice, reescribe las oraciones. Utilice el formato correcto, la forma correcta de las, de las palabras de dadas. Recuerde colocar el signo de pregunta al final de su petición. ¿okay? Estos son los requests. Otra vez, request. So we have close the door, please. This is an order, right? This is an imperative. Entonces, ¿cómo sería la respuesta correcta acá? Vamos a ver. Who can tell me the right answer here? Could you close the door, please? There we go. Very good. Thank you so much, Rodrigo. That's perfect. Could you, do, uh, could you close the door, please? Dijimos de que cuando nosotros utilizábamos could, al final iba a ir la parte de please, ¿verdad? Como could you, pl could you close the door, please? Es como para hacer énfasis, ¿verdad? Could you close the door, please? And then uh, we have the next one that says here, uh, please take out the garbage. And then we have would you. So how is the correct form in this case, guys? What is the right answer to this? Teacher, um, mm -hmm. yo lo estuve intentando hacer ayer. Esa como, would you take out the garbage, please? Pero mm -hmm. no sé si estaba incorrecta, pero nunca me, nunca pude mm -hmm. colocar la correcta. No sé en qué estaba fallando. Sí, ok. Well, thank you so much, Rodrigo. Thank you. So, vamos a ver. Dijimos que lo de please va cuando, al final, cuando utilizamos could. Pero en este caso no tenemos could, sino que tenemos would. Entonces sería, would you please take out the garbage? Si lo intenta así, creo que le va a salir bueno. Yes, he's right. Ok, there we go. Margarita just confirmed that. There we go. So yes, uh, you need to do it like that, Rodrigo, because we put please at the end when we use could. But in this case, we have would instead. So, would you please take out the garbage? Esa es la forma correcta. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So, then we have uh, don't sit there. That is the order. And then we have would you mind? Dijimos que después de would you mind, íbamos a tener como estos verbos en gerundio, ¿correcto? So, sería would you mind not sitting there? Así sería, ¿verdad? Dijimos, would you mind not sitting there? Y bueno, las demás, eh, no sé si tienen alguna pregunta con las otras dos, o estamos bien. No questions, right? Ok, vamos a ver. Después teníamos una actividad de listening. Eh, no sé si tuvieron algún eh, inconveniente con esta parte. Any question, no. guys? Uh, no, no, ok, muy bien. Muchas gracias, Margarita. Thank you. Les pregunto porque de repente, ¿verdad? Pasa así como acaba de decir Rodrigo. Acá en esta no pude, me salió mal. Entonces, por favor, les pregunto. And then we have uh, this uh, reading uh, section here. Uh, it's really similar to the other uh, reading exercise that we had before. Básicamente, ustedes leen esta parte. Esto es como una especie de, de como carta, ¿verdad? Y ustedes acá van a contestar. Aquí se trata de uh, request. And then what happened as the tree was being chopped down? What is the problem with the dogs? And then uh, you only have to read uh, all this and then you need to answer the questions here, right? Vaya, vamos a ver. Y por último, guys, de la última parte, dice, escoja las frases con información más apropiada. Bueno, esto es lo que acabamos de ver. Entonces tenemos acá las eh, cláusulas dependientes y las independientes ok, tenemos las expresiones de tiempo acá lo separamos por una coma y luego va la expresión principal ok, so I, I think that you guys uh, shouldn't have any problems with that so guys uh, do you have any questions at this point anything that you would like to say before we go before we leave estamos bien, verdad alright guys, well Thank you so much, Francisca. Thank you.
All right, so guys, uh, that is going to be it for today. Uh, remember, we have we don't have classes tomorrow. We have classes on Monday. So I hope you guys uh, can enjoy your weekend. And I will see you guys on Monday. Take care, guys. Okay, Bye, thank man. you, teacher. You're welcome, guys. Bye. Bye, teacher. Bye. Good night. Good night.